No, 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 no. Where it says in the Bible, it says uh, they're supposed to pick up the cross. Yeah. For Jesus. I've read the Bible. No, it doesn't say pick up the cross for Jesus. It doesn't say pick up the cross for Jesus. It says pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah, and the reason why, why the reason why Yahushua says that, why Jesus says that, is because Jesus had to bear the cross. So when you when you pick up the cross, you're ready to take the, everything that Jesus happened to Jesus. You're ready to take upon yourself. You're ready to take persecution, to be hated on, to be spat upon, to be ridiculed, to be hated by all men on His account. But count yourself blessed, for great is your reward in heaven. So that's that's what it is. If I was Christian, I'd, I'd preach. I'd be. So why are you not Christian then? Why I can't be Christian is the more question is I would love to have a conversation with, him, with Jesus. You'd love to have a conversation with him. Do, do you think Jesus owes you that? Possibly, yeah. Why? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not in special, and neither are you. No one's here special. But why can't he owe a conversation? I'm special. If you want it that bad, if you want it that bad, why can't we have a conversation? If he. Jesus. Jesus already done it all. Yeah. Jesus done it all already. Jesus, yeah. Jesus done it all already. You know what I mean? Well, look, I'm going to show you what, what my lovely friend there just showed me. Look at this. This is what he says here in Matthew 16, 4. Jesus had been going around and he had done many signs. He had healed, he had raised up the dead, healed the sick, casted out demons. And in fact, he casted out a demon right here. And they asked him to um, show them a sign. He said, oh, we would see a sign from thee. And you know what his response was? He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but no sign shall be given it, except the sign of the prophet Jonas. For three days was the prophet Jonas inside the whale's belly. So shall it be with the Son of Man, that he shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the world. So basically, even though you're going to want a sign, he's not going to give you a sign because he's already given you the sign. The sign was... He's, he lived, he died, and rose on the third day, and was ascended to be sat at the right hand of power. That's the only sign you're going to get. If you don't want to believe it, you don't have to believe it. But what will happen is this. He will come in all his glory, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he's Jesus Christ. And by then, it's going to be too late. And the revelation is going to come? He's going to come, no, yes. you mean that when he's going to come? What do you mean? He's going to come. Uh, when the end times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's going to come, yeah. And by then it will be too late. There's no repentance. So then when he comes, what happens? I just told up. you. Pardon? You start flying up. The Christian, they, they fly up. The are you trying to mock? Are you trying to mock? Are you trying to mock? What do you mean am I trying to mock? Mock, are you trying to... Um, insult? Are you trying to be um, insult? Ins no, are you are you are you trying to insult while I'm smiling? I'm not insulting. You're insulting to who? Because it's the way I you said it. Are you gonna? Yes, are you gonna fly up? Yes, and are you gonna fly up and you're laughing? So it's like you're it's like you're being cheeky. No, you're being cheeky. I'm not being cheeky. No, you and you keep pointing your finger as well. I don't yeah. understand why you keep pointing your fingers for. Because you're pointing your finger at me. No, I'm doing this and I'm saying I'm doing. I'm not my. I've read the Bible. Are you I'm sure you've read Muslim. the Bible? I'm not Muslim. Are you sure you've read the Bible? Yes, I have. What have you read in the Bible? Tell me. You asked me. That's what I'm asking. I just asked you a question. You can't answer a question with a question. I've read there's going to be a rapture. No, it doesn't say it in the Bible. Not at all. The word rapture is not in the Bible. So no, it is not. Bro, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Can you get up on your phone? Can you get up on your Bible? Get up that scripture on your phone. The word rapture is not in the Bible. That is a lie. And this is the thing, you see, you see, you see scripture says here, the scripture says that even when he was around his disciples, they didn't even believe. You know what I mean? They saw all the signs and wonders themselves. And they still doubted. Even when Mary Magdalene came up to um, Peter and John and she said, I have seen the risen Lord, they didn't believe. Even when, even when the other two disciples saw him along the way, they went and told the other um, 11, we've just seen the risen Lord. They did For not believe. Easier. 2,000 years later, we find it easy to believe. But, but imagine that. Didn't. The people that were with him did not even believe. Yeah. 
interesting. And then even when the other ten turned around and told Thomas, we have seen the risen Lord. What did Thomas say? I will not believe. At least I put yeah. my hands in the piercings on his hand and thrust my finger through his side. Right. So I mean, and then after, when he finally done it, he fell on his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. And what did Yeshua say unto him? He said, shot. yeah. This is one of them. Bro, I said it doesn't say rapture. That's, that doesn't say rapture, bro. That does it not says, say nothing about rapture. When I mean rapture, I'm talking about end times. Mm. When Jesus comes. Rapture has, the rapture is not end times. So you so said you you've read the Bible. The you said you've read the Bible. Then yes. tell me what you've read in the Bible. Tell me. Just quote, quote scripture to me. I mean, I can't quote specific the exactly, but I can quote what it says. Okay, well, there's scripture that says, the scripture that says, how does the scripture go? Um, um, let not the, um, let not the, um, not let the mighty man boast in, not, 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 not the wise boast in his wisdom, nor the rich man boast in his riches, nor the mighty man glory in his strength. But let he he boast, boast about this, that I am the Lord, exercise the loving kindness and judgment in all the earth, for in these things do I delight. So you can be boastful in the Lord. When you know the scriptures, it says, go ye into the four corners of the earth and spread the gospel. These are simple scriptures. You could even quote a scripture where it says, um, um, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not kill. I have a question. You, do you think that Islam is a religion? You still haven't quoted the scriptures, okay? You, you don't know scripture. Because you... I don't know, I don't know exactly. Okay, no, okay. I don't, but I know what it says regarding the end times. And there is a mention of a rap, like a rapture. Right, am I right or wrong? No, there's a mention of a gathering. There's a mention of a gathering. Where he, where, where the, where the faithful, the faithful that have died, he raises up from the dead and he brings them unto himself. That's correct, right? Yes, yes, yes. And that will happen. It will happen. The scripture says it will happen, so it will happen. And they will fly up. It's no one crazy. knows if they will fly up. You said, I'm not no one knows if they will fly up. It doesn't say so they will why fly do you up. Think I'm mocking. I'm not mocking. It's the, how you done it. You know, like that's recording. You're in it. You see, you see, you see when you see when people speak, there's there's a sincerity. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, by your fruit, by their fruit, you will know them. Yeah. So even if, even if someone tries to proclaim that they're being righteous, if their actions are not righteous, I will know by your actions, no matter what your words say. So even if you're trying to say, oh, why did you say I was mocking? By your actions, I could see you was mocking. Possibly. You know when you say rapture, what do you, what do you define that word as? What is rapture? That when Jesus comes, with the trumpet, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, people will be raised that believe in him, and they will go up in the sky. And I'm not trying to sound stupid, you know exactly, you know what I'm because talking about. Because rapture means a feeling of intense pleasure or joy. I'm not, I'm meaning it in the religious term, not in that, I know what it means. Rapture means when Jesus comes, the end times, he will bring up everyone that believed in him, and they will be raised. If you seek, if you seek, if you seek repentance, yeah. if you seek repentance, turn to Jesus. There's no repentance in Islam. There's no washing away of sins in Islam. You're you great. Can I finish? Can I finish? What I'm saying. The Bible doesn't mention anything about. Well, no, can I? Can I finish? Yeah. There's no redemption. One second. One second. The There's no redemption in Islam. Yeah. There's no remission of sin in Islam. Yeah. There's no washing away of sins in Islam. Yeah. There's nothing of that. All there is in Islam is one spirit here and another spirit here. One count in your good deeds, one count in your bad deeds. It's like skills, and one will outweigh the other. That does not exist in in. in let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. That doesn't. No, because I've not finished. Then go about your business if you don't want to hear what I'm saying. Because I just said. Then, then let me finish what I'm saying. Then you can speak. Does that make sense? That's what you call a, 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 a friendly dialogue. One person speaks, then the other person right, speaks. Finish. So what I'm saying is a very simple thing. There is no salvation in Islam, zero. Even the perfect example, Muhammad, he even said he doesn't know where he's going. When his people for asked him, are you going to, um, to be with Allah, to be in Jannah, whatever it's called, he said, I don't know where I'll be. No one knows where they will be. And he's dead. He's not alive, he's dead. Maggot food. The person I believe in, the God I believe in, he lived, died, and lives forevermore. He sat at the right hand of power, and he will come and judge the whole world. Now, in Islam, you believe something very similar. You believe that 
Esau is going to come and judge the world, but you just don't believe he's the son of God. You don't believe he died for your sins. And you don't believe that he's the one that's going Yeshua. to... Yeshua. Esau. In, in Islam, it's called Esau. He's called Esau. That's what you believe. So no matter how, in Islam, you're screwed. Islam, you're screwed because they have no remission of sins. It doesn't even tell you about the, sacrifice, the sacrifices of old. It doesn't give you the dietary Can laws. I say something now? Go, go, say? go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, now go ahead, go ahead. I, I know it, they believe in the Trinity. You must believe in the Holy Spirit. I'm listening to you. I must believe in the Holy Spirit. I'm listening. That you have the Holy Spirit. People that are Christian. I've met people. I don't. I think you're, you're preaching. Do you, you, do you believe you live your life of what it says in the Bible? Like the Holy Spirit in terms of the Holy Spirit. Do I believe? Do I believe I live a, sin, a sinless life? Not uh, like the Holy Spirit. That like you live a life that the Holy Spirit has ordained you to. Live. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. yes. Really. Yes. Okay. Because that, the way I think I've met people, and I, and I feel what you're doing is trying to condemn me because if I follow Islam, is that what you're trying to do? No. I feel. I think you feel convicted by my words. I think you feel convicted by my words. I'll give you an example. If there was a, if there was, if there was a wizard or, or a warlock standing here, a man that practices magic, and I said to him, the Bible says that those that, that do divinations, incantations, that, that are, are soothsayers, that look to the, um, to the host of heavens for a sign or wonder, and do all this astronomy and all that stuff, that you're going to hell, that it's an abomination unto, unto the Lord. If they're saying, oh, well, I'm condemning them, I'm not condemning you, the Bible condemns what you're doing. What you are feeling that I'm telling you is a conviction because you feel convicted by my words. But these are not my words. This is the I words of the I Bible. Some of it is like person, not convict. I know what convicted means. It means that I feel it at heart. What you're saying. The only thing I agree with you is when you talk about when you make the comparison, you know, about Jesus and the, the Islam. But I don't agree with what you said about the Philistines that God will have trouble. But that was in the Old Testament. About God. Yeah, and, and, and Yahushua says that, that the old wine is better than the new wine. That's the thing I disagree with. So you disagree with what Yahushua is saying in the Bible? Are you talking about the Old Testament? Jesus says in the New Testament, in Luke, yeah. he says that the old wine is better than the new. That's what he says. I mean, if I were to be a full Christian today, which nothing is stopping me, it's just, I take it a hot value that they don't consider the people in God's that's the, that's the problem. We consider everyone. But you just said they want to take total victory over Philistines. No, I said God says that I stand God in victory that. over Philistia. Yes, that's what I said. Okay. I, mean, I love my neighbours. I treat everyone as I would like to be treated. I don't treat people how they treat me. When someone treats me horribly, that don't mean I'm going to treat you horribly. I think you've been a bit disrespectful to me. It don't mean I'm going to be disrespectful to you. I don't think I've been disrespectful. Of course you wouldn't. A disrespectful person doesn't say they're disrespectful unless they're, 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 they're able to humble themselves. I think you're being disrespectful to me. I've not said anything disrespectful. Look at the way I'm even standing with my hands. You know, even my posture. Yeah, look at my posture. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, being I'm trying to have a scriptural verse where we can have a reasonable explanation. You've not said any scripture though at all. <laughs> I'm not. You've not said any scripture at all. What you're saying. I'm trying to understand some aspects so I can understand. Oh, look. I'm let me, let me, I am okay. Oh, cool. Let me let me let me yeah. let me try and preach to you now, yeah? I'm gonna try and preach to you. What faith are you, brother? What faith are you? Sorry? What's your faith? My faith. Yeah. Uh, uh, believe in you believe in Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. So let me let me teach you a little about about um theology, just a little. The reason why you have the belief system of one God is because of the Torah. The Torah teaches us who God is. The reason why Islam can claim the belief of one God is because of Abraham, through the lineage of Ishmael from Abraham. Because they say that Abraham came to Ishmael and it was together that they, that they, they built the Kaaba. That's a lie. But I'm not going to get into that. So what I'm basically trying to say is the reason why we know who one God is is because of the Torah. Now, in the Torah, he, he specifically says his name to Moses. He says, I am that I am. Yahweh or Yahuwah. 
That's his name. Tell them Yahuwah, Yahweh has sent you. So he says his name. Now in Islam, there is no name for Allah. He's just called God. That's it. He's nameless. Every single other deity on the face of the earth has a name. Whether they're pagan or not. Hades, Poseidon, Hera, Krishna, Vishnu, Shiva. Every single one of these pagan deities have a name. Allah's nameless. That's already a red flag. So this is how we can, that's how someone that has knowledge can say that it's not the same God as the God of the Torah. Because if it was, it would have the same name, number one. Number two, the God of the Torah, Yahweh, he says very specific things about who a prophet is and the signs a prophet will bring and the signs a prophet will give. If the prophet isn't doing these things or is teaching you a different doctrine, then let that prophet be put to death. This is what Muhammad done. So we can look and say that Muhammad is not a prophet of Yahweh. And if we look into the New Testament, because the Injil also came before the Quran, if you look in the New Testament, Paul says, if another, if an, if an angel or a person speaks a different gospel to you from that of which we have taught you or preached to you, let that angel be a curse. Now, the angel Jibril came to Muhammad in a cave. He never ever once said his name. The person that said his name to Muhammad was Khadija's uncle or cousin. So Muhammad, this angel never revealed himself to Muhammad, not once. So you don't even know if that was an angel or a demon. No one knows. He was the only witness there. So just think about it. Imagine you in your own bedroom and you come here to the park and you're telling everyone that you saw an angel. An angel came to you. He never told you his name. He never told you nothing about you. Not, he did not declare nothing. He just said, write this stuff down. Do you expect everyone here to believe that you're a prophet of God? Yeah, I don't know why that's the question. No, <laughs> Exactly, but this is the case of Muhammad. This is the case of Muhammad. But this is what happened with Muhammad. This is how Islam started. At least you're, you're understanding. You see what I mean? That's that's fishy. Now, when you look at Jesus, now I'm gonna I'm gonna skip very forward. When you look at Jesus, Jesus lived. There's more evidence of Jesus' um, life than there is of the prefix that lived in that day. So the ruler of that prefix of that area in that day, there's more evidence that Jesus was alive than that man. There's more evidence that Jesus lived than a lot of historical figures that we have today. For example, you would never doubt that um, Abraham Lincoln was alive, even though you've never seen him. You'll never doubt that. But some people would doubt that Jesus lived. When there's much more evidence to suggest that Jesus lived. Not only that, there was over 500 witnesses that saw the risen Jesus. 500. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, and I can go all the way to 500. So much to the point where even his own disciples, Peter, that was saying, I will never deny you. I will die rather than deny you. When he was faced, when he was in the face of death, he denied him three times. He had a sudden change of heart when he had saw the risen Lord. He proclaimed it from the mountaintops in the presence of the Sahadrim, in the presence of Caiaphas. That was the high priest of the time. You had Saul. Shaul. He was another uh, member of um, the Pharisees. He was going around persecuting the early church, killing Christians, the new Christians. And he was walking on his way to kill more Christians. And then after, he saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. To the point where he changed, and that's who Paul is. Look at that change in the life. And this is what Jesus does. He changes the hearts of men. He compels you. When you're feeling convicted, or you're feeling like someone's condemning you, that is the Holy Spirit telling you to get right. That's what it is. So don't be fooled by all the, the, the mirage and the smoke screen. Because when Jesus comes, all that mirage and all the smoke is going to clear and everything will be made known to you in an instance. He says we will all be naked before him. Everything that's done in the darkness will be revealed in the light. There is no one, only the scripture, it says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. You understand? 
So I don't know what your faith is. I don't know what's happened in your life. You get me? I'm not assuming something bad has happened in your life, but something bad has happened in every single person's life. But I will encourage you to go home and if you're really trying to find God and you really want to be a better person, if you don't want to go and burn in hell, because the Bible says that it's not God's will that man should perish, that man should burn. It's not his will. So go home. I would encourage you to go home, kneel down. The Bible says that you don't have to be like the hypocrites that stand on the mountaintops with their fancy prayers, speaking many words that they may receive the praise of men. He says, surely they receive their word. But when you want to pray, rather go you into a, into a small space in your house, in the corner of your house, and kneel down and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You'll find that. If you want to know about scripture, yes, you will be. You'll have the armor of God. That's where we have a problem because I know I've seen this. Christian people who I know they they're not real Christians. No, no, I, but can you let me finish? Go on. In, for example, example, in like the Gaza thing, there's some Christian women and children and people that have seen a lot of horrible stuff that happened to them. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Remember, what you, example, remember, remember what you said about, about picking up the cross? Yeah. Jesus was the only person that lived on this life that was blameless, sinless. Yahushua Hamashiach, he never done a single thing wrong. And yet he was spat on. He was, he was hung amongst, um, amongst sinners. He was beaten worse than any person upon the face of the earth has ever been beaten. And he was made to carry his cross. So no matter what anyone on earth goes through, and there's a Sermon on the Mount, read the Sermon on the Mount. You know what I mean? So, all these people that go through trials and tribulations, they will be comforted. He says, take my yoke and learn of me. All those that are heavy laden and tired, come unto me. Learn of me, for I am, I am, I am meek. I am, I am, I am lowly and meek in spirit. So just pray and seek God wholeheartedly and he will come to you and you will be protected. It is what it is. I mean, I, I, I try to understand. I wanna, uh, you know, if I'm gonna do it, I wanna see. And when you say you have truth, that it's the word of God, is it? You don't have. Is it the same thing as Islam that you don't have proof? What do you mean? You, think, you say who was it written by? The Bible. The Bible. The Bible was written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament was written by many different authors. Many different authors. The first, well, you've got the book of the first four books. First five books, um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Numbers. The first five books, that makes the Torah. And that's the book of Moses. Whether Moses wrote it or not, wrote it or not, we don't know, but they call it the book of Moses. So we can make the assumption that it was written by Moses, but I don't think that is the case. You don't believe it could have been changed. You don't believe the Old Testament, and you don't believe that. I'll tell you honestly what I think. On, this is what I think. The scripture says that if anyone should change or add to this word, that he shall have his portion in the lake of fire. So, in the New Testament or the Old one? In, in the New Testament. Okay. So, you see what I mean? Anything can be changed. As long as men can have something in their hand, it can be changed. It's, it's, it's not difficult. But whether it is still true, that's different. The Bible, the, 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 the message of the Bible has never changed. It has never changed. It doesn't say that God created the, the, the earth in, in 14 days and on the 15th day he rested. It still says he created it in 6 days and on the 7th day he rested. It still says that Jesus, he lived, he was born in Bethlehem. It doesn't say he was born in Jericho. It doesn't say he was born in Chicago. It doesn't say he was born in Yemen. He was born in Bethlehem. He's a Nazarene. It still says he's a Nazarene. He was baptised in, um, in Galilee. River Jordan, it still says that. It doesn't say he was baptised in the River Nile. It says that he stood before before Pontius Pilate. It doesn't say that he stood before Caesar. So the Bible doesn't, it, the, the core structure of the Bible doesn't change. The message is still evident. When people try to say, oh, well, the Bible's changed, that's because they are trying to find fault. And when someone is trying to find fault in something, it's because they are feeling convicted. But rather than, rather than feel, rather than try to find 
fault, why do you accept the conviction and say, yes, you know what, I am not a righteous person? Yes, my righteousness is as filthy rags before you. I submit to your will. Please help me. Let me be a better person. Instead, you want glory in your own righteousness. And that's why we have what we have nowadays in the world. Everything is subjective. Everyone wants to question everything. No problem. God bless you.